This video is an introduction to the UCS user administration. The purpose of the user administration is to create new users, the modification of user attributes, the user detail view, changing passwords of different users, editing multiple users simultaneously, searching for and also deleting users. In the broader sense, User administration also focuses on the administration of users and groups. A separate video which focuses on just this topic will appear on our channel soon. Let us start with searching for users. The user search can be easily reached by clicking on favorites in your toolbar and choosing users. You can also click on users and choose users there. By default, all users are displayed here at a glance. At the moment, there are 57 of them. You can also switch between having the user overview presented in a list or as tiles. You can use whichever form of presentation you like. Up here in the search field, you can now browse all users. By default, the first name, the last name, the username and the email address can be used. If, for example, I am searching for Ingo, I simply press enter and the employee Ingo will be found at once. In order to show all users again, we remove everything here from the search field and press enter. If you want to search for users according to certain criteria, you can use the button to the right of the search box. On the one hand, we can adjust in which container we intend to search, whether hidden objects are displayed, and according to our desired criteria. To give an example, I select the employee number and search for the employee number 10048. If we click on the username, we get to the user detail view. Under the tab General, you can define essential attributes for the user, such as the name, description and primary email address. If you want to change a user's password, you simply define a new password here. Here, you can also decide whether or not the password history should be ignored. The password history makes sure that this password has not recently been used by this user. The password check makes sure that the password complies with the given guidelines, which can be viewed under the Policies tab for all users. On the other hand, you can enter more information about the organization and superiors if you scroll down. To go back to our example, it is here where we would also find the employee number which we were looking for earlier. Under the tab Groups, you can define the different group memberships of the user. Each user should usually be in the primary group domain users. For example, if you want to change the rights of all users, you can do this through the group domain users, instead of doing it for each user individually. Under the Account tab, you can make various settings for the deactivation of an account and create an account expiry date. If a user is blocked from logging in, for example because the password was entered incorrectly too often, you can unlock this user again under Locked Login. In addition, you can apply various settings for the Windows client, set a specific Samba privilege, define at which times the user can log in, and optionally restrict the user's login to specific computers. In the POSIX Linux Unix section, you can view and optionally change the Unix home directory, set a specific home directory share, and, for example, view the user ID, which cannot usually be changed after creating a user. 
You can also configure SAML settings here. Under the tab Contact, you can enter different contact data, either business or private. All you need to do is simply enter contact details here. That would be it for the user detail view. In order to save the changes you have made in the user detail view, click on the Save button in the upper right corner of the page. To add a user, select Add in the General User view and define a container in which our user should be saved. Just click on Next and enter the most important data of the user. It is important that you enter at least one last name and one username. On the second page, you can define a password. For example, you can set a default password with which the user can log in. At the next login, the user is then forced to change the password from default to individual. If you wish to make further settings, click the Advanced button to access the detailed user view that we have just described. If desired, you could also directly add another user here. To edit several users at the same time, you can either select different users by ticking the box in front of the name, or you can select all or no users by ticking the box next to name. In my case, I want to edit these five users here now. Thus, I select the option Edit at the top of the list. You can also click on More and will get the options to move users or to create a report. Now you can make several different settings for all selected users. Please be careful here, because if you choose to override an attribute over the existing entry, this entry is replaced by the new entry. If you deselect the option to override instead, the attribute is only defined for the user if none was previously defined. You can also change the password of all users at once. Needless to say, we do not advise you to change the first names and surnames of all users. If you do not want to edit users but wish to delete them, select them in the user overview as I have described before and click on delete. Please note that this action cannot be undone. We also recommend deleting objects that are associated with the users directly. Because if you do not do so, the objects will remain on the server without having any function. To do this, select the option Delete Referring Objects in the Confirmation dialog. Afterwards, click on Delete. With this, we finish our introduction to the user administration of UCS. Further information, downloads and an online demonstration can be found at univention.com.